Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be integrating a radical function. We have the square root of x plus square root of x. And we're going to integrate this with respect to x. So I'm going to use substitution. When I saw this problem first, I thought about either calling square root of x something or the whole thing something. Now when you go ahead and set the whole thing equal to something, let's say u, then you're going to square both sides and then of course, you know, isolate the radical and then square both sides again. But this kind of uh, brings some difficulties as far as I can see and the solution does not look very straightforward. This didn't really get anywhere. So instead, I tried a different approach and I think that's going to work. And that approach is just calling the square root of x t. Why t? Because we already used u. So u is done. Okay. Square root of x set it equal to t. That's going to be my new variable. And then from here, everything unrolls. Let's go ahead and see how that plays out. I'll square both sides. And then once I get x, I should be evaluating dx, which means differentiate and then multiply by the d of the variable, which is dt in this case. So the derivative of t squared is 2t, 2t and then you can multiply. Now, another way to look at this d thing is if you find dx over dt, the, the derivative of x with respect to t, is just going to be 2t, right? 2t or not 2t. And then cross multiply, you're going to get the same answer. Make sense? All right, that's where the d's come from. Now, we pretty much have everything we need, so let's go ahead and start substituting. So the square root of x plus square root of x dx can be written as, now, the square root of x, which is t squared, plus t, and then I'm, I'm going to replace dx with 2d, 2t dt, which is this one, 2t dt. Make sense? That is dx. Awesome. Now, this is our new integral, and it's, do you think this is easier than the first one, the original one? Yes, because at least we don't have to worry about denesting this because denesting would probably be really difficult for this one especially. Anyways, I haven't tried it, by the way. But this is pretty straightforward because we have a quadratic under the radical. We're going to take care of it. There's a couple different ways to approach it, which I'm going to show you. But not only a radical, it's also multiplied by 2t. We can take out the 2 and just focus on t. But actually, I'd like to keep the 2t because if you differentiate t squared plus t, you'll get 2t plus 1. So 2t is actually a good thing to use here, so I'm going to keep it inside. But I want to do the following. Let's go ahead and take this expression without the integral symbols and write it as follows. I'm going to go ahead and since I do need a 1 for the derivative of t squared plus t, I could probably just do the following. Replace or write the 2t as 2t plus 1 minus 1. Does that make sense? I basically, I take 2t and then add 1 and then subtract 1, which is essentially 0. So why are we adding 0? Because we're going to separate this part. That's actually going to be very important because it's the derivative of the inside. Therefore, we can use the chain rule, but in the opposite direction. So we can kind of unchain things, right? Okay, that's how u substitution works. Chain rule and then reverse it, that's going to be u substitution. Make sense? Okay, great. Let's go ahead and plug this into the integration sign, symbol, whatever you want to call it, and this is what it's going to look like. Square root of t squared plus t is going to be multiplied by this, so it's going to be the square root of t squared plus t times 2t plus 1 dt. Since there's a minus sign here, after I distribute, I'm going to go ahead and split this up and write it as a difference of two integrals. And the second integral is actually looks fairly simple, but the first one is easier because we can use u substitution. For the second one, we're going to do something else. So let's take one at a time. Let's call this the first integral and let's call this the second integral. I'm going to go ahead and handle the first one first. And it's fairly easy. Let's go ahead and call this something. How about u? If you call that u, this becomes u prime, which means if u is equal to t squared plus t, then du becomes 2t plus 1 times 
dt, which is what I exactly have. So this integral turns into the square root of u du. Let's go ahead and handle one, number one first, and then we'll do number two, and then we'll subtract them. Make sense? Okay. How do you integrate square root of u? You probably know the derivative of square root of u, which is 1 over 2 root 2, 1 over 2 root u, right? But this is the integral, so we must use the power rule. I mean, we don't have to, but I'd like to write it that way. And if you use the power rule, you're supposed to add 1 and divide by whatever results from adding 1. And here, we could add a constant, but we don't need that right now, because at the end, we're going to add it. So please don't take points off because I didn't add the constant, okay? Thank you. Now, what is u, what is that? So we can write this as 2 over 3, u to the power 3 halves, or 2 over 3, the square root of u cubed. But u is t squared plus t, so I can back substitute and write this as 2 over 3 times the square root of t squared plus t cubed. A lot of times, people are going to write this with the power 3 halves, which is perfectly fine, and I think your professor should also be okay, hopefully. You never know, right? Uh, with the 3 halves. Okay. You just got to be careful about the domains. But this is an indefinite integral, so we should be good. But this is not the final answer, because our integral, or integrand, or the result, whatever, needs to be in terms of x. What is t? What is x? Let's go back to the basics, and t is square root of x. Awesome. So we're going to go ahead and replace t with square root of x, and that's going to give us 2 over 3, and then t equals square root of x, so t squared is going to be x, so this will be x plus square root of x cubed under the radical. Make sense? That's the first piece, which is kind of the easier piece. Now comes the hard part. A little harder, not too bad. So let's go ahead and take a look at the second piece. What is the second piece? The second piece, number two, remember, is the integral of the square root of t squared plus t. So that kind of looks like a nice expression, right? Well, there's a couple of ways to go about it. I think there's one thing called Euler's substitution formula, something. I can't remember what it is, but you said it equal to t minus something squared. But I'm not going to use it. I'm going to use trigonometric approach. Anyways, t squared plus t can be written as t squared plus t, plus one-fourth, it's like, where on earth one-fourth comes from? Well, we are trying to complete the square here, and if I add one-fourth to this, it becomes t plus one-half squared minus one-half squared, or just one-fourth. Notice that one-half squared is one-fourth, which is nice. Now, here's what we do. We're going to substitute something for t plus one-half, and notice that this is in the form should I say x or y? I guess I could use y here. y squared minus a squared. And whenever you have something, especially under the radical, it's going to work well, right, as well, you should replace y with a secant theta. Why? Because of y. Here's y. a squared secant squared theta minus a squared becomes a squared times secant squared theta minus 1, and secant squared theta minus 1 is tangent squared because secant squared is 1 plus tangent squared. I hope you know that. If you didn't, now you know it, right? Okay. There's no excuses now. So notice that if you square root it, you're going to get a tan theta. Don't worry about the plus minus signs at this point. Just take it out. Make sense? So that's why this is a good substitution. In our case, this is what it's going to look like. I'm going to replace t with or t plus one half, it's actually the whole thing inside the radical, with one half secant theta. And everything is going to proceed the same way. Let's go ahead and erase this area, clean it up, and then we'll do our work. So now, this is what I'm supposed to do. From here, obviously, you do need dt, and dt is going to be, if you just differentiate t, it's going to be one, and if you differentiate one half secant theta with respect to theta, you're going to get one half secant theta, tangent theta, d theta. Don't forget the d theta because it's needed for the integral. Notice that the derivative of secant is just secant times tangent. So it's kind of weird. Its derivative includes itself. Okay? And how do you prove that? You can write the secant as 1 over cosine, use the reciprocal function, and so on and so forth. All right. Now, this is what we have. And what happens if you replace t plus 1 half with that? 1 half secant theta squared minus 1 fourth 
is going to give you 1 fourth times secant squared minus 1, which is tangent squared theta. When you square root it, it's going to become 1 half tangent theta. This is going to become 1 half tangent theta. Does that make sense? Let me go ahead and write it that way, 1 half tangent theta. And then I'm going to replace dt with what? 1 half secant theta tangent theta d theta, another 1 half secant theta tangent theta. Don't forget the secant tangent because that's the derivative, remember? And then the d theta at the end and integrate it. So that's the conversion. Now let's go ahead and simplify this up a little bit. Uh, let me go ahead and clean up this area. I hope you don't mind because I just want you to be able to see the original problems and where this comes from. Great. Hopefully this made sense to you. This is the trigonometric substitution. So we did the, use the u substitution and now we're going to use the trigonometric substitution. Okay. One half times one half is going to be one fourth. Take it out. Tangent times tangent is tangent squared. And then we end up with secant theta times tangent squared theta d theta. Uh-oh, this is not a very good integral, right, is it? Well, we're going to do the following. I'm going to try to shorten the process. So, since tangent squared plus 1 is secant squared, I can replace c tangent squared with secant squared minus 1. Notice that these formulas are commonly used back and forth, back and forth, because our goal is to turn this into a secant and tangent integral to a secant only integral. And I'm going to share with you, like you can go ahead and check out if you are not familiar with powers of secant, because I'm going to use a formula here, you can go ahead and check out this video. Make sense? Okay. Now, let's go ahead, and by the way, let me tell you something, if you had tangent theta secant squared theta d theta, this would be a much easier integral because you could use u substitution. Okay, but here you can't, too bad. Now this is going to give you secant cubed theta, and then, of course, you're going to subtract secant theta d theta. For, for those, I'm going to go ahead and use a formula. But again, check out those videos if you're new to this. So the integral of secant cubed is going to be the following. You're going to get 1 fourth, right? And that's basically going to give me the integral of secant cubed is going to be 1 half secant theta tangent theta plus 1 half ln the absolute value of secant plus tangent, which is kind of weird because the integral of secant cube actually contains the integral of uh, half of the integral of secant because of, uh, you know, some reason. And then you're going to subtract from this the integral of secant, which is ln secant plus tangent, which is kind of like an interesting integral, right? And then plus c you can add at the end, but still we have to add another piece. So let's leave it like that. And then you can go ahead and simplify this. But, uh, you know, we've got to do some conversions. So what am I going to do for tangent theta, right? What is tangent theta? What is secant theta? Let's go ahead and uh, see where we use the secant theta first. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and back substitute. So we said, okay, I'm going to call... Wait a minute, where does this come from? Okay, yeah. I did use uh, this as... I think it's where... I used it before, did I? Okay, where did I use the secant first? Oh, yes. I replaced it. I probably didn't write it. I'm sorry about that. But basically what I used here was t equals 1 half. I don't know if I wrote it anywhere. I just can't seem to find it. But I did replace t with 1 half uh, secant theta. Oh, yeah, I erased it because we already talked about it. Remember? Okay, that's why I can't find it. So now... We have to use that expression. So t is equal to 1 half secant theta. And from here, secant theta becomes 2t. Or not 2t. It just keeps popping up. And I'm going to draw a right triangle with theta as my angle in a right triangle. Secant is 1 over cosine. So it's going to look like this. This over that. Uh oh, where does that come from? So secant is 1 over cosine. Cosine is this over that. So this is going to be 2t. And this is going to be 1. And this is supposed to be the square root of 4t squared minus 1. Make sense? Awesome. Now let's go ahead and back substitute everything. And then we're going to come up with our integral in t. And now we're going to go to x. But this is what it's going to look like at the end. Because we also integrate the other piece, remember? And turned it into x. Did I? Did we turn it into x? Anyways, I don't remember. But what happens here is... If you subtract 1 ln something from 1 half ln something, you're going to get negative 1 half ln something. Does that make sense? 
And then of course, I do need to distribute to one fourth. So that's gonna bring in a one eighth. That's where it comes from. So it's gonna be one eighth secant theta tangent theta minus one eighth ln, hopefully if I didn't make any mistakes, which I probably did, plus tangent theta. This is the theta part, right? And then we're gonna go ahead and we need to replace it with uh, the, we, we need to go back to the x integral from here, but let's go ahead and replace uh, to switch to t values. It's gonna be 1 eighth, secant is 2t, remember, and tangent is gonna be the square root of 4t squared minus one, minus 1 eighth ln of 2t plus the square root of 4t squared minus one. This is part of the integral. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put it all together. So the square root of x plus square root of x dx, it's probably not gonna fit here, but I'm gonna try my best, two thirds. And then we're gonna write the square root of x plus square root of x cubed plus one fourth times square root of x times the square root of 4x minus one. This is t by the way, okay? And then minus 1 eighth ln 2 root x plus the square root of 4x minus 1 plus c. All right, that should be the whole thing. Hopefully I didn't make any mistakes because I'm gonna show you, go ahead and take a look, but I'm gonna show you the result from Wolfram well, Alpha as well, so you can compare. Okay, let's go. Now, the result from Wolfram Alpha is pretty different, right? Obviously, there's a sign hyperbolic, so on and so forth. Why did it come out differently? I have no idea. I haven't checked it. But anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. I apologize. This was a long video. Anyways, it took a while. And bye-bye.